So now you have your vision board ready. We want to make sure that we've carved out some space for our vision board, and we want to now carve out sacred space for our vision. So today's next series, we're going to be talking about multiple things, but we're going to kick off with how to cultivate safe space, how to cultivate sacred space, really, in your home, and making that space your safe space, whether you have a mansion-sized home and you have multiple wings or you have just a closet in a studio, we want to make sure that you, even your desk can be a site of a sacred space for you. All right. So let's go ahead and create that sacred space, that brave space right now. So I want to check in to see if you resonate with any of these questions as we talk about sacred space, because they connect back into belonging. You know, have you ever felt like you needed a place just to go to, just to escape the world, right? A place where you can recharge, reflect, and connect with your inner self. You might be surprised to learn that this sacred space is so key and important. And whether this is something that's brand new to you, and it's just a loving, friendly reminder, we're just recommitting to connecting back into that sacred space to create it right in your own home, no matter how small or spacious the space is. Some people don't know this, and this is something that I found out that was so impactful for me. Um, Maya Angelou, someone who I love and respect very much, her writings have impacted the world. And so her quote says, each of us needs to withdraw from the cares which will not withdraw from us. We need hours of aimless wandering or of spates of time, sitting on park benches, observing the mysterious world of ants and the canopy of treetops. And Maya Angelou carved out space to write in a home. She actually had a sacred space. So creating the sacred space in your home is about cultivating that physical space that supports your well-being, creativity, and your inner growth. You can unplug, plug in, and unleash your infinite potential. You can plug in, right? Unplug, and be able to release your infinite potential. Unplug, plug in. <laughs> right? Release your infinite potential. So key. It can be a corner of a room, a nook in a bedroom, a meditation room, or even a whole room if you have the space. The key is to choose a place that feels special to you that you can dedicate to your inner work. So I want to make sure that you know some elements to include. There are no rules. There are no right or wrongs. This is just something that, you know, I have found over the years have worked for me. And so, you know, as someone who is uh, and comes from a line of traditional healers in my bloodline, comes from a line of growing up homeopathically, and also comes from a line of, you know, having, um, you know, people in my family, as some people say, that prayed over me, um, and as well walking in the indigenous path. You know, it's so important for me to have space to be able to plug in so that I can go back out and make an impact. And so these are some elements that I have found that have worked for me, and the thousands of people I've been fortunate to serve, you see what resonates for you because you are uniquely you. You have one imprint and you're going to create what works for you. So I would say these elements can include a comfortable seating place, right? A cushion, a chair, a mat that you can sit comfortable in for meditation, reading, journaling, etc. Some kind of natural element, a plant, a flower, a rock, or any other natural element that can bring a sense of connection to nature. You know, even if it's, some people have even not been able to have space for all of that. They've been able to put in a pebble stone or even um, some pennies, you know, just to ground that space, to remember that they're grounded. Or sometimes they put pennies to remember that they are abundant or to, to, to remind them that they started from the bottom and they're here, as Drake would say, right? So having something that connects them to nature. And then some kind of a sacred object or something that symbolizes what their higher intelligence, higher self, or spirit needs. You know, whether it's a candle, incense, a spiritual symbol. It can be a cross or a Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, um, the Quran, you know, um, a crystal, you know, a rose quartz to heal the heart if that's what's needed. You know, clear quartz, um, elekes, 
um, that represent, you know, within the African indigenous tradition, etc. So those can be sacred objects. And then some piece of inspiration, um, a book, art, music, anything that inspires you or feeds your soul. You know, um, I am a big record player fan. And so I have a Mustang uh, record player that I was gifted and, and blessed by. And so if there was space in my sacred space, um, that might be something that I might include if I'm listening to music that inspires and feeds my soul, because music is inspiring to me. What inspires you, right? Tune into that element. So, so far we have comfortable seating, natural elements, sacred objects, inspiration, and last but not least, a personal touch, right? It should inspire you somehow. It should have a part of your personality and taste. So feel free to add something that resonates with you and makes it feel like home. You know, if you have something that symbolizes um, a recipe that's from your family line, or can symbolize a picture of someone who is passed on, who you care for, that is inspiring this work when you say, I'm the answer to my ancestors' prayers. Or if you want to include a bowl of water, right, to, 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 to reflect into so you can see clearly that you replace every once in a while. You know, whatever our personal touches for you, I love water. So having water nearby reminds me of my connection to the ocean, for example. So that's your personal touch. So comfortable seating, natural element, sacred object, inspirational uh, piece, and personal touch. All right. So, you know, many famous leaders throughout history have recognized the importance of creating safe spaces. Mahatma Gandhi used to go on a daily walk to connect with nature and reflect on his principles, kind of like the sacred walking that we talked about earlier. Um, Oprah Winfrey has a meditation room in her home where she practices stillness and gratitude. I have a sacred meditation space that incorporates many of the elements spoken of and a couch and table, a place that I can go to and center it on to release the day and be able to restore my soul so I can reinvent myself, right? Um, as many times as is needed, when the world feels heavy, I can come out with ease and clarity, right? You know, many people have moved and created, cultivated small or large spaces. Even Frida Kahlo, um, the artist spoken of earlier, included a garden, a meditation room, and a studio where she painted, right? So small or big, super important to have some space, even if it's one shelf, right, that you can go to that represents, I carve out space to see me. I carve out space because I am the commitment. So this is your action steps. You can create your own sacred space. I want you to find a place in your home that you're going to clear out. If it has any clutter, clear it out. If it clutters here in your mind or in this space, clear it out. If you need to work through some things, we're here for you for that. Sometimes carving out space can be hard for some and easy for others. But Identify a space that feels special to you that you want to dedicate to your inner work. Clear the clutter clutter and create clean and inviting space, right? Dust it, wipe it down, things like that if needed. And choose the elements that resonate with you that support your intention for the space. Personalize the space with objects that hold special meaning to you. And set an intention for your space, such as cultivating peace, creativity, or connection. Visit your space regularly and make it a habit to spend time there. So I want you to take a moment to either do that now or put some time in your schedule where you will be creating a space that resonates for you. And if sacred space resonates, use that. If another term resonates, call it what fits you. Because remember, this is your unique blueprint and you were born to shine. So I want to hear what resonates for you. All right. And so we're going to go ahead and um, look at how that resonates how that's landing, and I want you to do some writing prompts connected to that. So go ahead, take a moment now, either create that sacred space for yourself or something akin to it, and go ahead and, or schedule that in your calendar and go ahead and call it in your calendar what suits you best. All right, welcome back. So here's some writing prompts. What is my intention for creating a sacred space in my home? What is your intention for creating a sacred space? in your home? What elements do you want to include in your sacred space and why? What elements do you want to include in your sacred space and why? How do you want to feel when you're in your sacred space? How do you want to feel when you're in your sacred space? What practices or rituals do you want to cultivate in your sacred space 
And how can you make your sacred space a reflection of your authentic self? What practices or rituals do you want to cultivate in your sacred space? How can you make your sacred space a reflection of your authentic self? Take a moment to reflect on that. All right, welcome back. Whether you wrote that in the covenant of your heart or you journaled that down, I want you to take a moment to celebrate. Don't forget to celebrate your new sacred space. You have a small ceremony to bless the space. Light a candle, play some music, or simply sit in it in silence and gratitude. Take a moment of gratitude to symbolize the outward expression of something that's planted in you. And if you already have one, maybe this is the time to spiff it up, to revisit it, to check in there, right? This is a refresher, whether you're brand new to it or whether it's something that's familiar, it's a refresher to freshen up your space, right? Remember, this is a space to nourish your soul. So make it a place that brings you joy and inspiration. Create a space, you know, sacred place in your home is so powerful. And so I'm so excited that you are committed to cultivating that for you. You deserve it. Because when you remember who you are, the game changes. 